so when you are hosted your host would always want certain elements to be followed vis a vis hosted entity and first and foremost is you know protect whenever you get into any activity first think about protecting interest of the host institute because any commercial activity will come with commercial liability and legal liability you have to see that you insulate your parent institute from your own activity protecting their interest is very important second thing conflicting issues you need to handle very carefully uh, they are meant for more in infrastructure people are meant for academic research activity you provide an additional platform but you don't take away from them completely for your own activity these are the areas you need to think into uh, decide rather you have to sit with your host and actually work out the appropriate policies scope of activity what would so in, as long as sign is concerned we are focusing i said only business incubation we 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 avoid any duplication of activity we have full fledged you know industrial consultancy and commercialization cell on the campus which does technology commercialization activity which does you know getting consulting assignment for the institute we don't get into it so that you know, so acceptability of the incubator becomes much higher when you avoid this conflicting issues yeah define who are going to be the target audience actually our mandate is focus only on your own community for the time being and that comes as a mandate to us yeah conflict of interest i, I said faculty time infrastructure usage equipment usage yeah uh, you don't want company employees sitting in departmental offices of a particular faculty member who also has a company all those issue i think need to be put on the paper displayed on your website so anyone who comes to iit uh, uh, to the incubator is familiar what are the do's and don'ts for them so i said if you want our website actually gives uh, has entire policy document uploaded on our website yeah uh, again like you know this is a mandate ours is a broad spectrum incubator we include social and strategic aspect again policy issue with the host that's the reason we have adopted it and uh, uh, technology so many times you know ventures are set up based on the technology or ip develop at iit bombay how do you deal with that you know i'm i'm dealing with that in later slides so i'm skipping here there are some more policy issue how much representation of the institute will have on your business in uh, on your incubator entity it is important that it is well represented but also see that it is not really the set of people and only academicians are not the only set of people on your governing board fine balance is required this will be needed because they will ensure that incubator actually protects the interest of the incubator or not so having the members key members from the institute on your board you know it is a necessity in fact they will only define financial support if they give you funding then they will they could also define in our case they have defined the usage of fund yeah and how do we pay back in fact uh, I, I, perhaps i'll deal in constitution uh, maybe i can talk now also our initial support came from the host institute and we our structure is society structure now society has a very weird you know some strange uh, provision under society registration act that if society gets folded up or it gets rearranged or merged you know its asset and liability has to go to an another society unlike company where when company winds up companies wind up you distribute its residual asset amongst the members so you can't distribute to the members nor it can go back to the contributor now iit bombay had given us some funding initial support plus there was some corpus that was promised to us and they they the condition with them was that that 
if it gets restructure or if it fails money should come back to iit bombay now that condition cannot overrule uh, you know legal provision and we took how, how to deal with this situation we took uh, took almost 9 months to 6 months to figure out finally we figure out a way that like you know, because iit is a, you know um, it's not a society it's not a trust it's not a company it is a uh, institute of national importance directly coming under the act of parliament yeah so if sign folds up its residual value by virtue of legal provision cannot go to iit bombay because an in, it's an institute under parliament it's not a society and we went to the registrar they also said no there is no other provision we dug out all old records charter constitution of iit bombay and very good provision we found was that that before it was declared as an institute under the act of parliament actually iit was registered as a society yeah so uh, all iits which came before 1961 they were uh, registered as societies and subsequently they were declared under the act of parliament as autonomous institution institute so we took advantage of that original you know a uh, clause we went to the registrar that this was a society to so permit us this is for good cause government mandated so government government somehow we could manage and now we have a provision in our constitution that if sign gets merged amalgamated or fails or whatever folds up money will residual value will go to iit bombay so you really need to you know uh, look at those aspect because infrastructure comes from your parent institute and if you restructure yourself it has to go back to the institute parent institute so this is a important thing and all this policy issue some or the other way it has to be incorporated in the constitution policies and processes yeah so that there is no individual discretion that we will follow or not it has to be part of it so and once you decide relationship needs to be legalized you know it needs to be defined in the constitution what would be the roles uh, obligation of each of them what would be the business activity what kind of reporting need to go back to the institute what kind of governing structure rep, uh, sorry host representation will be there in the institute at the same time what are the decision making uh, you know autonomy uh, rather decision making authority remains only within sign iit doesn't have much influence on you do this or you don't do this except for he uh, its own representation which is you know equal getting equalized with other external people so it becomes an independent body yeah uh, in our day to day affair or decision making institute doesn't interfere and that has been taken care of by our own constitution yeah so interest is maintained or protected through their representation on the board but they have only certain limited authority to participate in decision making yeah legal agreement to define relationship you know like this money will come back and like uh, sorry uh, how much uh, money or what kind of infrastructure basically will be given by the host what will you pay back how much will you pay by then certain disclaimer indemnification to protect legal and commercial liability all those things become part of the legal documents intellectual property so i mentioned that you know many times ventures are actually set up on the basis of ip or technologies developed at iit bombay now in iit we have a policy that any research work any ip or any technology that is developed at iit bombay ownership belongs to the institute not to the individuals yeah so when any venture is set up based on this work done at iit bombay 
that IP rights, ownership rights need to be transferred to the venture. Now, to, for transferring you require cash and startup has a, even faculty member, they all are first generation, you know, entrepreneurs, cash is always a problem. Yeah, so how do you go about basically technology transfer? So we said that just like for infrastructure, you know, we have de uh, defined this equity model. We also do uh, tech transfer against the equity. But then how do you value, you know, a particular IP? And again, we don't have a very long history or data, you know, which actually can give you a good, you know, model to value an IP or, you know, technology. So how do you go by it? And we didn't want to get into IP valuation. It, it becomes very complicated. Unless you have data or historical background, you know, it becomes extremely complicated process. And we don't have even expertise. That time we didn't have expertise at all. So we said, let us go by, you know, very flat, just like 3% for infrastructure, let us come out with some equity number for IP rights. What should be the number? How do we define that number also? Again, you know, lots of uh, issues. You yesterday, he mentioned that what VC will, what is the VC's take on equity, right? So you need to have, again, like we, we needed to have some equity which is not really taking away big amount from a company. But at the same time, it should be able to give certain work to the institute, right? So, how do you come out with the balance? So, very interesting formula based on certain mathematics we came out was like this. Um, uh, so, so, okay, what is, what is a tech startup? Tech startup is not only technology, it's not only IP, but lots of value of a venture is much more than technology or IP. Yeah, it's branding, it is team, it's market potential, lots of element, perhaps technology or product or value offering is just one fifth of the whole enterprise. So we took that, you know, 20% as a benchmark. There is no scientific methodology in the whole process. We wanted to come out with a, you know, one model which is acceptable to all. So we said, okay, 20% of, of a, of of a particular ventures worth we can attribute to a technology or product side. Yeah. But 20% equity, it's a big amount. It's not a small amount. Then, you know, entrepreneurs have no incentive when you give away your 20% of rent to start a venture. Now, again, in IIT Bombay, the distribution, I don't know if you, if you have any technology transfer process in place in your respective you know, institution. But typically when technology is commercialized, certain portion also goes to the innovator. Though uh, ownership remains with the institute, institute gives back certain portion of the commercialized amount, uh, you know, earning or revenue out of that particular technology to the innovator. And that distribution portion in IIT Bombay's institute so, so let me give you an example rather than theory. If a technology within IIT Bombay is sold for say 100 rupees, I am giving you an example. 30, rupee, 30 rupees is retained by IIT Bombay, 70 rupees go to the innovator. So 70, 30 is distribution within IIT system. We said let us apply the same norm for equity. So 20% worth of technology you divide into 30. 70. So, 70 basically the person who is also part of the venture, you know, since he is a part of the venture, he foregoes his right and 5% is retained by IIT Bombay and we came with flat 5% equity model for any technology that is, you know, getting transferred, transferred from IIT Bombay to an incubating company inside, we take 5% for, for tech transfer. And we sign holds on behalf of the institute. So that's how we came out. It was very interesting, but it is working out. It was complex, looking very complex then, but it is working out very well in our case. In the Cambridge, I remember the lady from Cambridge, uh, she came and she said, we spent one year to, you know, negotiate IP value. 
one year in the process you know so many ventures actually fizzle out yeah and we go by flat 5% formula and then again 5% may fetch us something may not fetch us something but also it helps the institute in taking away technology from the institute and you know to the end usage yeah uh, does it help the faculty at all i mean faculty typically becomes part of the mention na? so no, like the uh, transfer of the ip right so see uh, what happens is that when uh, ip at least in our incubator the profile is that that whenever you know ip goes to a particular venture faculty of that particular you know technology involved in developing that technology also becomes part of that venture so he or she holds equity in that venture right and that's the reason he or she is forgoing 70% of its his or her worth in the, from the institute right and then if it is sold to outsider in any case it's a cash cash model so iit bombay owns the ip right forget about incubator whenever they sold to the industry you know 70% goes to the innovator and 30% remains with the institute that is our distribution pattern which is very generous now we have incubator where cash is not coming right but instead equity is coming so this but because this incubators will also have technology uh, faculty member who were involved in development of this technology they will hold equity in this ventures right so so they said okay don't give us you know because by not giving 20% even their venture is benefiting so they said okay we will give you equity equivalent to 30% which is institute share and my portion i am foregoing because in any case i am getting equity from the venture yeah, but there is money transaction that is happening. there is no money transaction initially 70 30 ownership is what and uh, after that the 5% is what is not ha uh-huh, that's what i uh, i okay at that particular point saying that the two conditions she has taken the one is that what is the role of ip in the overall success of the firm number one no no i i i think i know where is the confusion it's Thank it's you. complex that's what i told you that there is a complex formula so see ip policy of iit bombay has three element all ips belong to iit bombay ownership is i forget about incubator part 5% part or whatever yeah all ip ownership rests with the institute yeah not with the innovator now industry come and buy the technology or take the technology on licensing yeah say uh, 100 rupees i'm just giving you now as a policy of iit bombay you know they it has a distribution pattern of 30% 70% 30% is so out of 100 30 rupees goes to the institute 70 goes to the innovator so that is its own policy right before we started incubator now what happens is that if this ventures come they don't have a cash to negotiate with this guy so you go by equity now what should be the equity like there is no fixed formula so we said one fifth of a particular venture belongs to technology because entire ventures worth is not technology when a venture is valued there are much other other elements are much more important than just you know technology yeah sometimes technology is not even a final product right so we said that any techno uh, technology or well, uh, you know ip is not worth more than 20% in a particular venture right so 20% of equity ideally should go to iit bombay and of which iit bombay will keep uh, 30% and balance would have gone to the faculty member right you you understood to, till this now what happens is that when a technology is getting transferred to a venture this innovator also becomes a part of the venture right so innovator says ki mujhe aap mera 30% mat do main aapko 20 taka nahi deta hu main sirf 1/3 deta hu so one third you keep by yourself only i don't want my 70% because in any case i am getting my own equity from the venture right so one third of 20% is 6.33 which should go to iit bombay so rather than 
we made it a rounded figure okay, 5 percent flat for IIT Bombay. Now whenever it is getting NKH, entire amount remains with IIT Bombay. Nothing goes to the innovator. Does that clarify? That is only the 5 percent, <laughs> equivalent of 5 percent. Because that, that's, uh, uh, startup team basically does their own innovation. We yeah. help them in the process, but we don't like IIT or that sign the. Uh, that goes into the founders' agreement. Right, that's part of founders' agreement. Nothing to do with this. IIT transfer can also be done from IIT to innovator also. It can the innovator be. doesn't have anything. I mean, that's what. No, but innovator, if he, they have innovator has a deep pocket and it has a great plan, they could do it at individual level also. Theoretically, it is possible. Though innovator has a 70 percent, that's a separate uh, component. And now IP is owned by IIT. IIT goes to the venture, not to the innovator. Why not? Because it is the uh, no, trans. No venture can be set up, no venture will agree. See, venture is not only innovator. Venture is the total founding team. Other time, founding team will not agree to get into venture if IP is known owned by the entity, venture entity, and if it is owned by an individual. But uh, innovator can go on lean and start a venture, and he can buy the IP from IIT. But no investor will put in money unless the IP is owned by the venture. No investor. So, you can create some nookkar shop kind of a model wherein you know I start my own this thing, I take in my favor, company nahi chalta hai band ho gaya, I own my IP. But koi investor nahi aega, scalability will be an issue. So, typical, it is a proper legal professional corporate entity where all asset belongs to the corporate entity, IP is also asset. And how can an entity start based on the asset that belongs to some odd individual? And he may walk away then. So, you mean to say venture in the sense a company? Company. No, no, that's what. Company, yeah. he could be a promoter of the company. Right, but IP belongs to the company. company so, you need to separate company from the promoters. No, what I meant was that. Yeah, yeah. It's a company right. owned by this particular person. Right. A major shareholder of the One of the shareholders. My question was, yeah. if you are incubator gets 6% hmm. in IP branch, hmm. what would be the theoretical percentage for a faculty who gets it like? So, the question is clear? No, it is basically, you know. I do understand. No, it is no, it, it, basically, theoretically, there is no percentage of I this thing. So, basically, you know, typically, it becomes a part of founder's agreement based on commitment by each of the founder, based on roles and obligation of each of the founder, you come out with a distribution pattern. My only point is that when IIT has a 70 per 30 percent getting 5, I mean 5 percent, 6 percent. So, faculty also will open up his cards and say that, okay, if IIT is getting 6 percent, I will get so much. Obviously. So, smart, smart faculty member will get definitely. at least 7, you know, 13 percent, ensure that I get my 13 percent. Yeah. But it could be bought also. Of course. If it is less, then he is not smart enough, but like, you know, you see. So, just a brief <laughs> overview on our constitution. Our constitution basically includes, you know, our mandate that is uh, business scope, focus, eligibility criteria, ex officio positions are clearly defined in the constitution. Director of IIT Bombay remains the chairman of sign board. Key IIT position like Dean R&D, Dean Resource Mobilization, so on and so forth are basically ex officio members in sign. Fund and asset, I already spoke about this, you know, funds and assets to go back in the event sign fails or restructure. And also uh, our constitution, and every constitution talks about rules and regulation mainly on operation side of, of, of this. Uh, how many board meetings are here, what should be the general meeting, you know, time duration you ought to have, what kind of reporting should go to the institute, so on and so forth.
No, but I, I'll tell you one tip on a very serious side, you know, it would be appropriate if you, when you work on your commercial agreement, like it would be appropriate that you also touch base with commercial lawyers, yeah. It's, it's very important actually, uh, so I personally have a legal and compliance background. I work in the industry for 15, 17 years. But still, we, and I prepared our commercial agreements, but we still uh, ran it through uh, independent professional lawyers. Because there are so many things you may not realize in commercial agreement. So when you work on your commercial, not constitution or policies, but when you work on your commercial documents, I think it's a good idea to touch base with the lawyers also. And those lawyers is not really institute lawyer, but it has to be a proper commercial, uh, you know, people who understand contractual agreements and all those things. Yeah, uh, quick view on our policy and processes, they define mechanism for transfer of IP. Also we have uh, policies to deal with conflicting, conflicting interests, mechanism of using, you know, institute's resources, very important uh, insulate institute from legal and commercial implications that is indemnification disclaimer our all agreements and policy first thing is you know you are at the end of it you will see there is a disclaimer clause and there is an indemnification ensured in our favor as well as in favor of our host our own vision and mission document they are in synergy with our parent institute so that you know the issue point is that incubator are more as an extension of existing you know role of your parent institute it's not really a rival to the parent institute so everything has to be in synergy with your parents focus and policy process document also includes the aspect like eligibility criteria admission process and what is our service offering exit benchmark monitoring so on and so forth I, I always like to see the slide, I, I don't know, it's a repeat slide for you, but for an incubator to come up in academic environment, there are challenges and everyone ha will have to address those challenges. Institute level is differing priority, I told you academic research versus commercialization, very bureaucratic structure we have to, at least at IIT Bombay we have to deal with quite you know quite a bit bureaucratic and inflexible structure processes are very rigid in the process we also have become very process oriented <laughs> yeah. but we have seen that we are not bureaucrats in that sense yeah very high focus on technology and theory less understanding of business part so whenever we talk to our entrepreneur now things have changed but initial day they always feel that technology will sell by itself and you will come across and it's a it's a huge task to you know shift them from uh, you know to uh, from a technologist to a you know real entrepreneur or commercial person it's a huge task and 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 again you you can't say that technology is not the only thing because they get offended so you you really need to be very careful when you enter and it's also because we don't have a long history of commercialization and entrepreneurship in academic environment. Things will change over a period of time, but at the moment it remains, you know, a challenge. Lots of academic mindset, everything is seen from, you know, again, you know, theoretical viewpoint and process viewpoint and so on and so forth. Incubator level, level challenge is sustainability. And like if you are starting a commercial entity, First ensure that you are sustainable, otherwise no, doesn't make sense to start a venture which is not going to be sustainable. Right side of people is always a challenge because you have to deal with, you know, academic salary. You can't offer more than what academia is being offered since you are hosted by them. So there is always a conflicting, a conflict on those part and unless you offer a good salary, no professional will come. Yeah. Uh, or I would say it's difficult to get the professional on the board. Choice of the company, what kind of company, I think you really need to basically institutionalize the process so that individual discretion goes away. There could be lots of, you know, pressure from the host only to, 
get into this which doesn't make sense right so i think choice of the company is very important where is this like you know faculty hai jana hai company shuru kar rahe hai chalo le lo wala approach will not work and most importantly building a big large business network that is very important and i think iit bombay is one of the biggest strength incubators you know one of the biggest contributor to the success of the incubator is its own network the kind of network that is it has created consistently from very beginning so involve right set of the people who understand entrepreneur uh, you know entrepreneurial dynamics markets businesses investors you know at the incubator level and there could be lot more which you and i can't anticipate but you suddenly face them yeah and some concluding remark incubators ideally should go by the host strength limit the focus where your host has the strength don't get into the activity that you don't understand or technology area that you don't have local expertise clear line needs to be maintained between leveraging you know host strength but at the same time managing conflicting interests i like iit brand name but i can use only up to certain <coughs> level you know i mean iit bombay incubate company doesn't mean that iit has put in money in me yeah or it has created me that all those thing one has to be very careful it has it could have a larger you know uh, legal impact going forward it's very important to involve all the stakeholder in the process that also includes government academia because they have certain con government has a huge role to play especially at the incubator level in the initial day you know they give good resources right so bi in bi means business incubator entity by itself need to be a sustainable entity and very important again i am repeating but it's very very crucial element that insulate university from the impact of commercial and legal liabilities thanks